Good morning, friends. Welcome to Christ Church Parish. We are so glad that you can be a part of our virtual worship service today. Whether you've come to us through the website or through YouTube, there's a link where you can find for the bulletin. I ask that you go ahead and print that out so that you're ready. I'm over here by our ancient Bible today, thinking about the fact that this Bible was produced in England and brought here and has been a part of the witness of this church for over 300 years. The tradition that we carry on is that people brought the church wherever they went. And today, we're bringing the church into your home. So be at prayer with us. I'm grateful to Gary and Emily for doing the music and for all the other people who have participated. Uh, this is the first service that's been entirely recorded by members of the parish. So thank you for joining with us. Be in prayer during the opening hymn, and we hope that God is with you as you carry the church in your heart today. Our opening hymn is All Are Welcome, as found in your bulletin. You can find a link to the bulletin in the video description below. We'll be seeing verses 1, 3, and 5. Our service of worship for this, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, is found in the bulletin, which you can find attached to this video, or in the Book of Common Prayer on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. And glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be attentive now as we hear the words of Holy Scripture. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. So listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4 and 15 through 18, responsibly by verse, as found in your bulletin. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly the Lord is our ruler. The Holy One of Israel is our King. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have brought death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves as to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, 
So now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were freed in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. And now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is the eternal life in Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive the prophet's reward. Whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God. Amen. This time last year, I was just back from Rome We'd gone to Italy with uh, Mimi's two sisters and the husbands, and we all had a grand time exploring some of the amazing sights. And it becomes very clear when you get to Rome that the features of Peter, the figures of Peter and Paul, are deeply significant. Paul, who was beheaded outside the walls of Rome, has his own church, and of course the Vatican sits where Peter was crucified upside down and then buried. But they're celebrated together. In fact, the 29th of June is the date on which both of them are commemorated, not to the two greatest uh, authors of the early church, but they're celebrated on the same day because they are tied together. Even the Book of Common Prayer remembers this as the collect closest to their day, the collect for today that I read, tells us that the church was built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Today, I want to tell you that you stand as one of the apostles and one of the prophets. 
Now, you'll have to stick with me for a little while because I gotta get you back into the gospel lesson. In fact, the benefit of you being at home today is that if you find your Bible, reading through all of Matthew 10 will help you to see how this, the last two verses of Matthew 10, bring together all that Matthew wants us to know. Jesus has done the Sermon on the Mount. He's told us what it means to be a disciple. He's taught us who the blessed were, and he's taught us the Lord's Prayer. But in the 10th chapter, the attention turns to going out into the world, being sent. In fact, this <laughs> missionary discourse, as it's called, is only in Matthew's Gospel. Matthew takes things that Luke has in other places, Mark has in other places, and assembles them together in a section that, in which he says, we're gonna be sent, we're gonna be struggle, we're gonna struggle, and we're gonna be welcome. And so today we find ourselves that we are moving from being disciples to being apostles, to being the people who are sent. Now, when you hear this passage the first time, whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet receives a prophet's reward. Whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person receives the reward of a righteous person. Whoever gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones will not lose their reward. It sounds like we're being instructed to be welcoming. And that's a good thing. Christ Church Parish has a history and a tradition of being a welcoming parish. And when people come in, we invite them into our fellowship. But the fact is that the shoe is on the other foot here, friends. Because in the 10th chapter of Matthew, he's sending the disciples out two by two. They are to be welcomed. Indeed, earlier in the chapter, if you'll reread Matthew 10, you'll discover that they weren't supposed to take a purse or an extra tunic or an extra pair of sandals. They were supposed to depend on wherever they arrived. So when Jesus tells them, whoever welcomes one in the name of the prophet, he's talking about the apostles. He's talking about us. I remember the night when Mimi and I got home from Wheeling Hospital after the birth of Sarah Kristen Del Cuse. There was this baby and I didn't know where the handle was. I didn't have the instructions. It was very terrifying, but I was now the father of the household. I had to do something I'd never imagined I would do before. Perhaps you've had a moment when you were suddenly in command of a ship or in charge of a family or looking after a business and people look at you and say, what shall I do now? And they, and, and they ask you as if you knew what was going on. The fact is that we begin to understand our apostolate, our work as apostles, because we get thrown into the pool. We learn how to swim. So what is our mission as we go out as apostles? The prayer book teaches us that the mission of the church is to restore all people to unity with God and each other in Christ. The mission is to restore all people into unity with God and each other in Christ. We're supposed to look for the broken pieces. We're supposed to look for the people who have been cast aside. We are supposed to look for the people who have not been welcomed and welcome them back in. But even more than that, we are dependent on those around us to help be together. About 10 years ago, the Episcopal Church began to call itself the Episcopal branch of the Jesus movement. They wanted to move away from thinking about the buildings that surround us to the fact that we are a movement. We are something that God is doing in the world. We are part of God's mission for the transformation of the world. And as the Episcopal branch of the Jesus movement, we were asked to do three things, to follow Jesus together, to go into the neighborhood, and to travel lightly. And I want to spend a little time on that. Since you and I are apostles now, since you and I walk with Peter and Paul, and we go about the work that Jesus does as he sends us into the struggle and show, helps us to see welcome. First, we are to follow Jesus together. Our identity is rooted in this way of Jesus. The renewal of our church will come only through discerning this way and practicing it together in the power of the Spirit. Christianity is an embodied physical way of life. It's not an institution. It's not a set of ideas or a creed that you can check the box on. The Episcopal Church has a distinct and rich heritage of interpreting and expressing Jesus' way, and every local church and every Episcopalian must be called to follow Jesus more deeply. We walk with each other, two by two, the Episcopal branch of the Jesus movement. And we are called into the neighborhood. In many parts of our church, the whole neighborhood has transformed since the day of its founding. 
Our church seems to have moved neighborhoods as much as anything, but there are churches who find themselves with neighborhoods that are completely transformed around us. But Jesus sends us to those neighborhoods, and even here on Kent Island, we are to look at all our neighbors around us. Jesus sends us together into the places where ordinary life unfolds. We are sent to testify to God's reign as we form and restore community by sharing God's peacemaking, God's reconciliation, God's healing. God is in the business of reestablishing a neighborhood where people can look after each other. For many churches now disconnected from their neighbors, this will mean attempts at small experiments in sharing God's peace as we learn to form Christian community and witness to the neighbors around us. And so we are to be part of the bond that reconciles and draws back together the people of our neighborhood, people of different races, people of different income levels, people of different ages, and people who are new to our community as well as those who have been on this island since 1631. And as we turn into the neighborhood, we're also to travel lightly Jesus sent the disciples out empty-handed. Peter and Paul were under arrest when they were transported to Rome. And sometimes we're dependent on the hospitality of our neighbors. We must hold inherited structures loosely as we make space for alternative patterns of organized life together. We must discern what, our tradi what in our tradition is life-giving and what unduly weighs us down. Traveling lightly means going in vulnerability, taking risks, and being challenged by both God and our neighbor. What I've really described is what the last 110 days have been like for us, friends. We are following Jesus together. Though we can't see each other, though we can't hold each other's hands, though we can't have coffee hour, we are following Jesus together. And the disappointments and the hurts the joys and the happiness that we've experienced in these last 104 days has not been changed by our separation. Jesus is present in your home and in my home and here in this building. And Jesus is in our neighborhood. We need to watch closely what's happening to our neighbors around us. We need to make sure that the justice and peace issues around us are looked after. We must remember that we are called to be for our neighbors. We are apostles who are sent out to others to bring reconciliation and peace. And by heavens, we have to travel lightly, no longer with books to hold us down, no longer with, with buildings that right now we're caring for but are not yet responsible for being inside of. Traveling lightly means that we have to be ready at any moment to respond, as I did when Sarah began to cry as you might have when your business partner said, what are we gonna do now to take on that authority? Peter and Paul had no imagining when, the, when they were young children that they would wind up at the center of the most powerful capital in the world, but they did it. They followed Jesus. They followed Jesus into their various neighborhoods and they traveled lightly throughout their life. This 10th chapter of Mark, Matthew changes the whole story from simply being disciples, those who sit and are taught, and we become apostles, those who are sent to teach others. And Jesus says to each of you, as he says to me today, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. We fit in a triangle of God and Jesus and ourselves in that welcome that says our mission is adapted to Jesus' mission, which is adapted to God's mission. And whoever welcomes a prophet, that's you and me, in the name of a prophet, that's Jesus, will receive the prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, name of the disciple truly I will tell you none of these will lose their reward friends we are the body of Christ and Jesus is present with you today and as Jesus sent his disciples out on mission you are now sent as apostles to the way may God bless your home and your work and those whom you care for and may God bring us all to our prophet's reward amen our service continues with the creed, which is found in the bulletin attached to this video and also on page 358 of the prayer book. We profess the faith of the church as we say, 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Having professed our faith, we turn to God in prayer for ourselves, for our neighbors, and for the world. The prayers of the people are found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In a prayer for those working in social services, Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son came not to be served, but to serve, bless all who, following in his steps, give themselves to the service of others, that with wisdom and patience and with courage they may minister in his name to the suffering, the friendless, and the needy, for the love of him who laid down his life for us, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Greet those around you with a sign of Christ's peace, and hold in your hearts those whom you cannot see today. 
Friends, it is our deepest longing that soon we will be able to gather to celebrate the sacrament of Christ's body and blood in the Holy Communion. But for now, we are still separate, and so we pray a prayer for spiritual communion, beginning first with the Lord's Prayer. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And give thanks for the saving death and resurrection of Jesus, and ask him to come to you now. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come to me spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend, and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with me today as I offer myself to you. Hear my prayers for others, for myself, and keep me in your care. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you today and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is hymn 607, O God of Every Nation, verses 1, 2, and 4. <laughs> Once again, friends, thank you so much for watching and participating in this worship service. Even though we are dispersed physically, we are joined together as one body in Christ. I want to thank all of the participants in today's service, the readers and the singers, and Gary and Emily, for their beautiful music, and the videographers whom you don't see who are helping us uh, put these uh, productions on. 
I want to thank those of you who participated in the parish Zooms this last week. We had about 40 households that checked in to hear about our plans for beginning in-person worship on July the 5th. Uh, today, while I'm talking to you, or whatever time you hear this, uh, there's been a group that has gathered of ushers, lectors, uh, greeters, Eucharistic ministers, and altar guild who are beginning to plan how we will safely gather again for in-person worship on Sunday, July the 5th, for one service at 9.30 a.m. I hope that uh, you will be uh, aware that your newsletter is coming to you. In this newsletter, you'll find lots of information about the reopening process and at the center, a covenant that will ask each adult to sign. Uh, this covenant says that we will op operate together to promote the safety of ourselves and our children. Uh, parents, you'll sign on behalf of your children on this covenant. I want to thank those who have gathered Sunday morning uh, for a trial run. We've gotten everybody together. The, uh, in the next week, you'll receive an email asking you to RSVP if you are coming on Sunday. I fully appreciate that many of you will want to stay home. It is a wise thing to do to stay away from contact. Uh, and the more conditions that you have that require that, the more important it is that you do so. Uh, but the RSVP will allow us to know how many seats we're preparing for. Every seat will have a bulletin waiting for you when you come into church. The recovery groups that use our parish have begun to meet again. Wednesday and Friday night AA groups and a, and a Wednesday night NA meeting um, are using all of the guidelines that we ourselves are using as a parish as we gather. Our sisters and brothers at Living Water are meeting off property right now, but they'll be rejoining us uh, as the season moves on. Lisa Pinkham has put together a fun Sunday evening Christian formation Zoom. And so if you'd like to know more, send an email to, to Lisa. You can find her on the, on the website, and she can connect you with some parent and children time uh, for Christian formation on Sunday evenings from 6 to 6.30. We won't have a coffee hour today because we're doing some rehearsal work here at the church. We got an invitation from the National Church, and I'm beginning to look at a program called Sacred Ground. Sacred Ground will address racism, the systemic racism within our culture, and help us to find ways that we can be an anti-racist church. It's taking a stand for the dignity of every human being. If you'd like to know more about Sacred Ground and a dialogue beginning in the fall that includes videos and some reading and some chance to talk to each other, please contact me or Dottie Wilson as we we prepare sacred ground for this parish. God willing, the kitchen is going to be repaired this week. The plans are for the plumber to come in, disconnect the last of the hard surfaces, and uh, begin working on the floor. So please pray a kitchen floor prayer today. Camp Wright is preparing to celebrate its 90th uh, anniversary. It was founded in 1930, and this was to be their great anniversary uh, year. You can find Camp Wright on their website and on Facebook. They're getting ready for a silent auction. I urge you to support our sisters and brothers at Camp Wright uh, in these difficult times. And speaking of difficult times, we're still collecting food for Graysonville. As you are able to bring in foods, non-perishables that we can share with our sisters and brothers in Graysonville, the doors of the church are open uh, Monday to Thursday, beginning at 9 a.m. So bring your food by when you're able so that we can share with Graysonville. Lastly, the 28th of June means the end of the second quarter. Our finance people are beginning to plot out the rest of the year and also 20, uh, 2021. Uh, and so it's really important if you are able to continue to contribute, please do. Uh, it's good for us to wrap, wrap up this second quarter with a strong sign that we are continuing to do the work. Friends, we are praying together, we are learning together, and we are caring for our neighbors around us. That's the work that Christ calls us to do. And whether we can actually do it physically in place or separate as a diversified body, it's important that we continue to do so. Pray for your church. Pray for your leaders. And I hope to see you on July the 5th if you feel able to join us for in-person worship. God bless you. Have a good lunch.